Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dino, and it is an absolutely fantastic day out there today. It's the mid part of February, but it's plus 10 here in Niagara Falls, Ontario. The sun's out. It's just a beautiful day. And I have a project lined up today that I've been meaning to work on for a while, and that is building this battery hold down bracket. Now, every once in a while, You'll go to the store, to the, to the dealership, to find a part for your motorcycle and the dealer has a hard time finding it for whatever reason. And that seems to be the case for this battery hold down bracket. So I've got a hold of one here and I'm going to fabricate one today. My buddy Carl's going to come over and give me a hand. It should be a lot of fun. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink and enjoy. Dino's Tinker Shed. I love it when I get to break out the welder. I'll see you soon. hold down brackets role is to hold the battery in place and stop it from bouncing around and it's located underneath the seat on top of believe it or not the battery to get it off you remove these two uh, 10 millimeter socket headed bolts and then it just lifts right off with it on the bench here we can kind of see how it's built it is a, a piece of channel, for lack of a better term, that's about 20 millimeters wide on the inside. It's got a lip that runs down it. And then it has this piece of flat bar that's bent into it at an angle that I'm not sure what that angle is. It has a couple tabs here that fit over top of the battery terminals, I, I suppose for a little bit of protection. It appears to me that this is stamped out of one piece of metal. I'm not sure if these holes are punched in. There probably are when the process is done. We're going to simplify ours a little bit. We're going to make this out of a piece of channel that we're going to cut out of some square tubing. And we're going to weld this flat piece on here at whatever angle that is. And then I'm going to see if we need to actually have these protectors here. I don't know if they really do much other than look good. But we're going to start with, um, with our piece of tubing. We're going to cut it to length. And then we're going to cut it so it has that lip around there. And it'll fit. And then we're going to have to figure out some kind of foam here that's roughly the same thickness that I can fasten to the back side of it, probably like weather stripping or something. And that's what actually holds the battery down in place is that piece of foam. So it gives us a little bit of flexibility or a little bit of error because that foam can take up if I don't quite get this angle perfect, but we're going to do our best to do so. Let's start by looking at the tubing we're going to use. I have this piece of thin wall one inch tubing here that's just ever so slightly longer than the factory mount. So I can trim this down. What I need to do though is I do need to trim a line to get this channel here in it. So once I cut it to length, I'll use an angle grinder and I'll try to cut a smooth line along there to sort of make this shape. That will leave me with the other side, which is like exactly the right size 
for this little wing here. So I should be able to make everything I need out of this one piece. If I was really, really skilled, I could probably cut this and then bend this out. I, I just, I think it's gonna be easier for me to weld it. So the first thing I need to do is cut this tube to length. To do that, I'm just gonna physically go like this and make a line with a pencil and I'll take it over to the chop saw. The next thing I want to do is drill these two outside holes. I'm not really going to worry about these lightning holes that they have in here. There's no real need for them. But these two are needed to bolt the unit down. To transfer these over, you could just sort of flip them and then use a pencil and kind of draw the line and then try to figure out where the center is. But I'm going to use this. What this is, is a transfer punch. So it has the same size diameter shaft on it as the hole you're trying to match. In this case, it's just a little bit bigger because, probably because of the paint more than likely. But then it has a centered cone in the middle here that will transfer the exact center of the hole to the material you want to drill. These are really handy. They're relatively inexpensive. This one I got a set, you can see, of all different sizes on sale, and it was cheap. I think it was 20 bucks. So they're not gonna last forever. They're not you know, snap-on quality stuff, but for the homeowner, these work pretty good. So let's lay this out, and we'll hammer the holes home. This one is slightly oblong, probably to make alignment better. So I'm just going to drill it into the center here as best I can. And if I have to enlarge it, I'll use a Dremel and just make the hole a little bit bigger. Okay, now we can drill this up on the bench and the vise itself. First of all, what went through my mind is how stupid am I to actually volunteer for this. <laughs> Unbelievably painful. This looks pretty good. It's all cleaned up. The next thing that we need to do is cut this angle piece here. To do that, I'm simply going to cut a length of this tubing equal to that, and then I'm going to cut the sides off it, and that will give me the exact piece I need for here. So I'll get that done. I'll cut this on the chop saw, and then we'll cut the wings off it.
I tried to measure this angle here using a protractor um, and I didn't have a whole lot of success. I think it's around 30 degrees is what that angle is there. In the end, what I did is I just used some magnets here and a little bolt as a brace and lined it up by eye as best I could. There's no angle that's on this magnet that lines up perfectly with this, but I can get it pretty close. I can tack it and then I can tweak it a little bit with a hammer until I get that perfect angle and then I can go through and stitch weld the whole thing on the top. I think overall it should work out pretty good. To weld this, I've hooked up a secondary ground lead to my ground clamp. I couldn't figure out any way to hold this in position on that magnet without somehow damaging it. I don't know if that's quite heavy enough. Uh, I'm not using a lot of amps here, so we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. Um, the worst that can happen is it can, you know, melt that ground wire. I've got my little crappy welder here set as low as it will go, and I'm just going to tack the center here. I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. Here is the finished product. Again, my welding isn't the best. My welder's not great and I'm not really all that experienced. But I think overall it turned out pretty good. I've tried it on the bike a couple times and it fits very well. I just now need to paint it black so it'll look like the factory. I think this paint turned out really, really well. And the two units look very similar. I decided not to put these little tabs on. I don't really think you need them. The only thing that's left here is this little bit of foam that sort of applies some pressure to the top of the battery. Carl's coming over and I'm gonna get his opinion on what to use here. I've got an idea. I wanna see what his thoughts are. Carl! Hey, what's up? Not much, you? Oh, another day. It's beautiful outside. Hey, yeah, I love it. I love it. Hey, uh, so here's the foam that I'm thinking about using. So it, it's basically that diamond crap that you get at the dollar store. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good, but it's a little thicker than uh, what, what was on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm losing weight, Carl. So, oh, my yeah, so when I hit 200 pounds, I'm gonna buy new pants, but until then it's suspenders. So when the, when the straps go, I'll admit it. But what do you think of that? Like, well, you got any ideas? Well, or? I brought this uh, two-sided tape. Perfect. Let me get a little bit thicker, won't it? It's, I, I don't think it'd be work, but, okay. but I did bring this. Oh, hey. And I, I think, I had a little stockpile of this in the basement. Yeah. And, oh, it's uh, self-adhesive too. Yeah, you just put it on there and it looks... Carl, it's, it's, exactly, it's exactly what we need. Wait. All right, well, let's, uh, let's cut a piece and we'll, we'll fasten on and see what it looks like. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, let's Go get on. that done. Carl, I think that turned out pretty good. I mean, it looks, it, looks factory. It looks factory yeah. for all intents and purposes. And, Definitely. And you said it's hard to find these things. Well, I did call Claire's to get a new one and they couldn't find it. And they said, try eBay. Because it, yeah. it was obsolete in their parts catalog. But Come on, really? NA. Yeah. So. But I mean, a small part like that, 
it's kind of fun to make. Oh, yeah. it, it builds your skill sets and allows you to buy some tools if you need them, like a welder or grinders or something yeah. like that. You can justify that to, to your wife or your husband or whoever you need to. Um, I had a lot of fun making it and I really appreciate you bringing that, that tape over. That was like perfect. I thought it would be. Yeah, so spring's coming soon. We're getting ready for a riding season, like it's the beginning of March here. Another couple weeks, we'll be out on oh, the yeah. road. Sure. Can't wait. But until then, if you like the video, right, subscribe, leave a comment, tell Carl how much you miss seeing him on the show, because he's not here as often as he was in the beginning. Busy guy. Busy, busy guy. But until then, have fun with whatever you're doing. I'm Dino. Carl. Tinker Easy. Yeah, let's go All have right. a drink. All right. <laughs> <laughs>